So I will call this meeting of the Board of Selectmen here in Millville at 7 o'clock p.m. on July 12th, 2021. And I will call to order the meeting of the Finance Committee on July 12th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, great. Thanks, Aubrey. So, Aubrey, um, item number two on the agenda is joint session with FinCom to so approve year-end accounting transfers. So, um, everyone has the ledger. And I have a few other things open as well, but I'll turn it over to you to walk us through this and what we need to do. So I can do that, right? That's yeah. when you turn it over to me. Yes, okay. uh, you see there's the FY21 end of year transfers, the summary sheet, mm -hmm. which the town accountant uh, prepared. And there's, uh, you know, I don't know, seven items needing that are over budget, if you will, and needing to be... Uh, uh replenish through transfer from accounts which are uh under budget you'll see the principal source of the funding to transfer from uh is either town admin salary or uh health insurance benefits you'll see the assessors is needing four thousand dollars which is related to uh some additional um or uh, unanticipated i guess would be the thing um uh, so, uh, software requirements that they had, plus their fees went up. Um, firefighter EMT wages, that's a big number that showed up. That kind of surprised me. But uh, in talking to the chief, what that uh, entails or what causes that, caused that was that during COVID, the state allowed EMTs to have non-EMTs riding with them in the ambulance. And so firefighters, on-call firefighters, rode in the ambulance uh, on a number of shifts. Um, arguably, the cost, this incremental cost or cost related to that can be, might be re reclassed into CARES Act funds, but we don't know that yet. We will try to do that. But in the meantime, to just be sure we've got our bases covered, we're looking for that uh, transfer over to cover the shortfall in total in the uh, fire department uh, uh, budget lines. Uh, building inspector, you can see that's an increase. And I know that there was additional hours put in by the building commissioner um, because we he didn't have the support of uh, an admin person. So he covered, we didn't fill the admin position in large part because we didn't want to bring in fresh blood, if you will, during COVID. Uh, Norfolk Aggie, 13 bucks, it's just a switch from one to the other street lighting um, it costs more than we anticipated and there's also some uh, blue wave solar that gets applied there so we get credits but we also have to pay a portion to the for this solar coverage i still don't know if we save money on that deal um, but in any event we're 2900 bucks short on that uh, department line item Worcester County retirement benefits uh, a day late and a thousand dollars short on the contribution for Worcester County. Basically, what that is is that you got to get it paid in by a certain date, and the accounting wasn't set up uh, apparently back in early July last year to get it in on time. This year they're getting it in on time. Uh, and then lastly, Medicare fringe benefits uh, came in higher than the the model provided. I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, the this covers the shortfall. Okay. So you've got thirty-six thousand seven hundred bucks needed and thirty-six thousand seven hundred bucks provided. Um, to the extent you have <clears throat> are, are ready to, uh, you know, when you make motions, I would just read out the accounts that the money go, the account the money goes into, and where it comes from. I wouldn't necessarily identify the account number. I just refer to it is the account numbers is indicated on the sheet provided. Okay. Um, a question I had, so looking at the building inspector, I know that's a salary position, but we paid extra, is that? Well, normal? it's not really a salary position. It's pay, he's paid by the hour. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Yep. Okay. So Peter, on all of the, um, I guess the assessor, the fire and the building inspector, was it the case that we knew that we were going over on those? I know we tried to do our best with budgets to actual and stay kind of up to date um, 
those I don't know have had been raised in, in the past. So um, I just want to make sure that departments are really like tracking where they stand and alerting us when they feel like they're going over because yeah. um, in total, like the, you know, the total transfer amount doesn't bother me so much. Um, the salary ones or the, you know, those kind of, I, I wouldn't say bother me, but um, right. you know, we just ought to know when we're going ahead of our salaries. Yeah. So I, I knew that the building inspector was likely to track uh, beyond what was budgeted. I knew the assessors were going to have some exposure, you know, and I think we might have talked about that in one of our meetings. Um, so this covers that exposure. I, I knew the street lighting had some exposure and it's got some complication by this solar deal. Um, we knew about the Medicare, I mean, about the Worcester County uh, retirement amount there. Didn't really know and I still have, want to understand better on the Medicare. And the firefighter was the one that I think caught us by surprise. And so, you know, part of it, the other explanation is that there were two or three, I'm not sure within the fiscal year, there were at least two house fires. And in those situations, you know, a lot of on-call cost comes, you know, is required. And so we did have one even just as late as the, you know, the last, uh, you know, reporting period, within the last reporting period or month was a house fire. And so you have all these folks coming out on call. Um, and I'm not sure also if the chief, when he budgeted, uh, if he provided properly for the increase in minimum wage, which is what they use to pay some of these on-call folks. So that, like I said, I'm really surprised. And I, you know, I think we'll be aggressive trying to identify and reclassify some of that to CARES Act because we do, we do have some funds available for that. Yeah, it sounds like maybe we might be able to do that based on your explanation. Um, just one other question for me is, do does the departments that are related to these particular um, expenses, do they feel that they're budgeted appropriately for this coming year, the year that we're in now, or do we have, do we already know that we'll have exposure? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I think they, I, well, I'll say this, I think the assessor has some second guessing on what he's already submitted. So we're gonna find out more about that. All right, that would be Dave Manzella. Um, the chief remains comfortable with, with what he's budgeted for, including the most recently uh, negotiated police department deal, okay? So he thinks what he's provided in his budget is uh, adequate to cover, uh, more than adequate to cover the, the, uh, the, the latest union contract agreement. The fire department contract agreement is still in negotiation. Um, but we hope, hope we provided sufficiently for that. Um, the rest of it, you know, I think we'll have a little bit more to learn. Are there any other questions or comments from anyone? Okay, so then I think um, if I remember correctly, we go line by line and then finance committee has to vote and then board of selectmen has to vote or if, if the board of finance committee doesn't want to go first. I don't assume, is that correct? You can either go line by line. I think it's adequate to go for the full, since your approval is going to be on the one sheet, you could read off, you know, I move that the following uh, year-end accounting transfers take place as follows, and it's, you know, assessor's financial services, $4,000 added to the budget coming from town hall admin salary, and just do that for each of those lines. And I think that might just cover you, and I think that the finance committee could sort of say ditto. <laughs> substance. Thanks for me. Okay. Um, So looking, does anyone, I'll make the motion if no one else wants to, just to, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. All right, um, so I'm making a motion for the following year end transfers that the assessor financial services will receive $4,000 from the town hall admin salary, also the amount of $4,000. Second. 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 Second.
that the firefighter EMT part-time wages will receive $20,000 from the health insurance fringe benefits on behalf of employees in the amount of $20,000. That the building inspector and zoning enforcement salary will receive $6,000 and that will come from the town hall admin salary in the amount of $6,000. That Norfolk Agri Transportation will receive $13 from the Tri-County Vocational Transportation accounts, also in the amount of $13. That street lighting electricity will receive $2,900 from the town hall admin salary, also in the amount of $2,900. For the Worcester County Retirement Fringe Benefits on behalf of employees will receive $1,012 from the town hall admin salary in the full amount of $1,012. And Medicare fringe benefits on behalf of employees will receive $2,800 from the town hall admin salary in the amount of $2,800. Looking for a second. Second. Thank you, Andrew. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Board of Selectmen, good? Yes. Okay. So I will make a motion um, to approve a year-end transfer in total of $36,725 to the general fund with the details as explained by the finance by the Board of Selectmen. Appropriate? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we'll say Gary seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have two, well, we have one member absent and one vacancy. If anyone's interested, reach out. That's my plug. All right. So I think we're all set. So for the finance committee, you're welcome to hang out. But if you want to go do other things, that's also allowed. Thank so you just, for including us. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. You have the authority, Aubrey, just to sign on behalf of the Finance Committee. Is that correct? Um, You're you asking me? Special motion. Yeah, Aubrey. You, you don't have to have a special oh. motion for that. You know, there's a standing authorization for Jennifer to sign on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Okay, fair enough. I mean, let's just be thorough. And um, Angela, if you're still there, did we lose you already? Or she had kind of an emergency. Okay, oh, thank yeah. you. Um, is there a motion to allow myself, Aubrey Bono, to sign the approval of the year end transfers on behalf of the Finance Committee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. So, um, Peter, I'll just get that signed right now and send it over to you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. You thanks for. Your, you want to close your meeting? Yes, I will. Thanks for including us. But I am um, looking for a motion to adjourn the Finance Committee meeting at 7 13 p.m. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. Any announcements, Peter? No, I don't really have any. Nope. Okay. Correspondence, the MECC invoice. Yeah, I just want to put that in there. It's just showing you a nice win for the town. We're about to go live in the next month with the Medicom and Emergency Communications Center. It's fully, the cost of our participation is $82,000. And it's fully funded by state 911 grant. And so we were invoiced uh, for 82,000 and we were provided a credit due to the grant of $82,000. So it's just a nice looking piece of paper where it says balance due zero. So I thought I would include that in the correspondence. All right, sounds good. So meeting minutes for June 7th and June 21st. Did everyone had a chance to look at those? Does um, anyone have any comments? I didn't see any errors myself. Anyone see anything? Andrew, you seem to have the eagle eye editing. Did you catch um, anything? I didn't catch anything. Okay, great. Um, 
So looking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes for June 7th and June 21st, 2021. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes of June 7th, 2021, as written. Thank you, Todd. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 I'll abstain. I wasn't there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. And I even printed them right now so I can sign them and drop them off tomorrow. Okay. All right, so the meeting, I'll, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes of June 21st, 2021 as written. Looking for a second. I'll second it, but I have to abstain. I wasn't there. Oh, yeah. well then how about if I second? <laughs> I will second. I just feel weird being the, all right, so Andrew, me. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Same. Good move on your part, Todd. Difficult to approve meeting minutes when you weren't there. Okay. So departments. So I see Matt and Brian here to talk about Thayer Street Road widening updates. Matt or Brian, whoever wants to go first. Uh, good evening, um, <laughs> Matt's here uh, from the uh, BMR School District um, as they're uh, undertaking a, a small project on Thayer Street um, between uh, Orchard Street and Berthollet Way. Uh, and this is in uh, lieu of um, some of the uh, buses that are gonna be increased in transportation and making it safer for travel. Um, at this time, I'll give it to Matt, let him explain what has uh, taken place so far and where it's going. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Peter, Brian, and the town for your support and assistance with the project. I know these things are not always easy to get rolling, but we're, we're trying to make sure that we can open school on time and have everyone be able to get to the right school that they need to get to. <laughs> so it's an important, important project. Um, so at this point, the district uh, had engaged Stephen O'Connell from Turning Point Engineering. He, their company was not able to join us today, but just to give a, a brief update, um, we met with uh, someone from Brian's team and we've spoken with the police department. We met on Thayer Street originally to review this, the general scope of work. And what was determined was um, the first thing that we needed to do was to remove some of the trees. Um, the decision was made to kind of take things sequentially because we weren't sure what the exact condition of the streets would be after we removed some of the trees. Um, so the initial plan involved three different steps. The first step is the tree removal. The second step was to uh, use recycled asphalt or blacktop and, and compact that on the edges of the roads if there was any damage to where the, the road and the um, the, outs, the outside of the road met, if it was necessary, just so that in the event that the uh, buses needed to go up on the past where we removed and up onto the shoulder, that's the term I'm looking for, the shoulder of the road, uh, that there would be some additional paved space. The third part of the project is really to assess where things stand after that, um, and then see if there's any kind of permanent modifications that need to be made. Um, as I've discussed with Brian, the district certainly is not looking to have any issues come from the work that we needed to have done. So um, once we have an a, a assessment of exactly what needs to be done to make sure that things are permanent and won't cause any problems for those people on the roads, the neighbors, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we take that last step. The tree removal, we did speak to the actual neighbors that it would impact. All of the trees were within the right of way um, uh, and they all essentially had the ability to be removed from the street. 
So there was really limited entry into anyone's property. There were uh, forms that were given to Stanley Tree Service that was awarded the work. Uh, they started this morning and they had forms if they needed to go into a neighbor's yard, they were going to reach out to them and, and go over what the scope of work was um, and just make sure that they signed. Even though we had spoken to people, we wanted to make sure if they were actually going to go into their property, then we would have a signature from them. One neighbor that we knew we were going into their property, we already got their signature in advance of the work beginning this morning but we left them with additional forms for everyone in that stretch between um, Orchard between Orchard Street and Berthelet in case they needed to. Um, I don't believe that has been the case, but I, I um, will follow up on that. And then after the trees are removed, again, we're gonna meet back out at the site and see what asphalt work needs to be done and then potentially what permanent work needs to be done, but that's where things stand as of now. Okay. Any questions? Or... Well, I guess, so it's, I saw this tree clearing today. Is that there more going on this week or is it just today? So it was scheduled for this week. We said that it would get done between the 12th and the 15th. Quite honestly, I need to check back with Stanley to see what progress they made for today and then see if there's anything uh, for tomorrow. When I spoke to the police chief, we had arranged for there to be, uh, they, for the police department to be ready to put details out in that area for at least today and tomorrow, but they knew that they were gonna check in with Stanley and the, and the officers that were on detail would give an update as to whether or not there was anything needed for tomorrow but the chief was prepared to make whatever arrangements were needed for the remainder of the week as well. Okay. I just asked because that impacts my pickup route to get my daughter from camp. <laughs> and so I have to go the long way around, all the way around Chestnut Hill to get to 122. <laughs> I, I understand and I do apologize to anyone that's listening that experiences an inconvenience due to this, um, <laughs> but it will certainly pay in dividends when the kids are able to get to school safely and people can pass the buses going in the opposite direction. I have had to pull into a driveway to let a bus go by <laughs> and then I can go. <laughs> We're hoping to avoid that in the upcoming year. So we did make that decision this morning, um, or the police did, and they called upon uh, the highway department. We went out in the uh, put road close signs up for them instead of just um, letting one lane of traffic go. So we did detour traffic for the day. Um, I know the rain really slowed them down this morning. Um, they had a couple other issues from what I heard and saw this afternoon. So I, I do foresee this taking probably, you know, the entire week. Um, you know, they're a very reputable company. Um, they do great work. They um, take pride and care in their work. So I, I really think that, you know, uh, we have nothing to worry about on that end of it. Thank you for that, Brian. And is it fair, excuse me, is it fair to say this is a, it's a district project, but they're the town's roads. And so you, you Matt and Brian are working hand in hand on this and whatever happens to the roads is really uh ultimately Brian's call, uh, you know, on behalf of the town. It, it's my call, but the district is uh, putting the bill for all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and Brian and I have been in touch through the, the entirety of the project. Peter, I know that you were involved in the beginning and then we looped you, looped you back in. Well, I'm happy to be looped out all the time, but uh, <laughs> but no, no, it's just when I, the chief told me there was a detail going on for this, uh, you know, it was like, oh, well, 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 I hope we're keeping people informed and you certainly have been. So that's good. Yeah. Thank you. We are working closely together and we will continue to do so. Yep. Terrific. Thank you. Any other questions for Brian and Matt before we let them go? All right. Well, again, gentlemen, you're welcome to stay, but if you want to go continue your evening elsewhere, certainly allowed. 
I'm going to go back into the school committee meeting, which is also in progress. So. All right. Sounds good. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Have a good Thank you, Matt. Bye, Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So next is the Board of Health Intermunicipal Agreement. So I was looking at the job descriptions and other things. Dustin, I assume you're here to speak about this this evening? Yes, I am. Great. Um, it's a, it's not going to cost the town anything, and, and it's going to be pretty beneficial when we need a fill-in inspector, mm -hmm. and it won't be any out-of-pocket for Millville, because our current inspector has been out on health issues, Okay. and we need to, and currently, we are subbing out, we do have an interim inspector for uh, septic. But um, it this is just going to cut. It's going to be nice. It's going to cut our costs down of our uh, the interim inspectors' fees. Okay. And is this so? Just to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So this is the Blackstone Valley Partnership for Public Health document that goes with Town of Millville. This is how we would enter into that agreement. And these two job descriptions would be a shared resource that would be available to Millville. Am I connecting all the dots together? Yes, for, for a term of three years. Okay. That we would not have, if we need an inspector, we just would be able to put in the request and we would be able to get an inspector for whatever we would need them for. Okay, great. And I just see it's all funded through grants. So I don't know, Peter, I know yeah. you reviewed this fairly thoroughly. Did you have any concerns or things that to share with the board? Uh, just, no, they, up to me. I had a number of concerns early on that they've reflected in, you know, updating the, the agreement draft and they provide a red line copy that mm -hmm. I looked through and it looks mostly uh, okay, there was just one sort of circular thing there where they indemnify us, we indemnify them, but we're part of them. Mm -hmm. So it, we're indemnifying ourselves around and around. That was the only thing. So that might be worth a follow-up question. I know they were struggling with that a little bit. Um, but this requires, and I don't know whether Dustin, if the Board of Health has met and voted in support of this and therefore can sign off on this. There's an IMA that requires the chair of the board of selectmen and the chairs of the board of health to sign off on uh, the agreement, which they consider to be final. And there's also a commitment letter that they provided, which requires, you know, basically the chair of the board of selectmen and the chair of the board of health. So both those things are going to require a vote, certainly of the selectmen. And I don't know what action the Board of Health has taken so far, but I think your meeting schedule has been, you know, summarized, if you will. And uh, yeah, so it's tough to get everybody together to do these things in a, you know, in a timely manner. I think the deadlines are July, end of July uh, for the uh, letter of commitment. And after which time, and but they also require the I, IMA before they can hire somebody, so. I currently saw, I signed the letter of commitment today. I did not sign the, I am the other form, the other IMA yet. Yeah. Okay. So. And, and this is a great, from what I read, because I have read it carefully, it is a fairly, uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for the town because it's in essence, the way that the, the, the folks at CMRPC who are the, coordinators of this thing um, described it. We get one eighth of the value of the nearly $300,000 grant each year for the three years on this deal. So you're going to get nearly, you know, almost $40,000 worth of uh, board of health agent and whatever this other person is services, which can be beneficial and, you know, not only septic systems, but, you know, uh, restaurants and other things that, uh, you know, could use an outside look and therefore maybe the town can save some cost otherwise. So hope it's yes. And housing good. inspections and yeah, all that. It's good. 
so it's a good thing. And um, I have to check back in our minutes. It has been talked about. I'm not sure if it's been voted on yet. But uh, but you would recommend doing this, Dustin, for the Board of Selectmen. And I see no reason for them not to take a vote tonight, both to authorize or approve the letter of commitment as well as approve the signature of the IMA. Would you would you agree? With I would uh, definitely. I would recommend the Board of Selectmen taking a uh, yes vote on this. Okay. Any um, other questions from anyone? Yep, uh, I have one. So how would the, so if Millville needed an inspection for something, how exactly would that work? Who would they have to go through to get that? North, the town of Northridge is running the program. So we would put the request into the town of Northbridge okay. and they would take care of it for us. Would their board of health have to approve every time we needed a uh, inspection? I, I don't believe so. I'd have to check with Sherry. I don't we think it requires an approval because we're in it as equals. They're just running the I'd have to check with Sherry. I can't give you a 100% answer on that, uh, but I don't believe it needs approval. We just put the request in. Muted. I think you're on mute. Yep, sorry. Um, so the entity, here I am. Am I still on mute? Nope. Okay. It's oh. um, so the entity is this uh, Blackstone Valley Partnership for Public Health. That's the entity. And it, the, the employee is an employee of the two employees that they're dealing with under this will be employees of Northbridge who will serve as this entity health agent, if you will. And so I think the town will be dealing with this entity, if you will, through Northbridge, as he says, but it's not Northbridge's Board of Health. No. It's a little confusing. Yeah. And we don't need their we put the request in and now these they're working for us for the job that's right and the board of health has to uh, put two people in on the on the oversight board of this entity okay that's the governance of the entity it's like the board of select and only these will be the oversight board and uh, it'll be one you know one member and one alternate appointed by the board of health from millville or of each town so that's really the boss of the agent who is an employee of Northridge. <laughs> okay. So I'm just that a little. That employee's reporting to this entity mm -hmm. overseen by the oversight board, but is muni in municipal service an employee of Northbridge. So this oversight board or committee would be the one kind of scheduling where they were going. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, basically it would be us. The Millville Board of Health would be scheduling this employee to where we need the inspection. Okay. So I'm just a little hazy on how it would work between all the towns, the inspections like how that would be scheduled and how efficient that would be. I don't see where that's described in the agreement. So I think the, the practice will evolve as time goes on. And really, you know, some towns may be contacting and getting the use of the agent for this entity more frequently than others. So you know, I don't know how they'll, you know, they'll have to work through that, it seems to me. And that's what that oversight board presumably is, you know, designed to do. But again, I'm speaking about something I'm not, it, we might have been better served for having the guy from CMRPC in here. And how many, there. what towns are a part of this so far? Uh, so it's Blackstone, Douglas, Hopedale, Menden, Millville, Northbridge, Upton and Uxbridge. Okay. And they're all equals in terms of equal access 
to the service. It's, it's not like it's prorated, you know, in the meta comment mm -hmm. bill that we got that we talked about earlier, we're prorated. We're 4% of the cost of that and 4% of the uh, service to be provided. This deal, we're an equal player and participant based on my read of this agreement. And okay. I don't know if Dustin, that's your understanding, but basically that's my understanding of it also. And, and we would still have our regular health inspector, right? Yes, who currently is um, still out on injury or so we do have one of our board members is a is a, one of our alternate inspectors but as for septic systems too we found another contractor to do that so it this will be nice that we won't be getting it it's virtually free if i we need a uh, a house inspection we call in put the request in and we still and they'll come and do the inspection it is really there's no it's really at no cost to us it's it's we're not going to have any bills from our from our um, septic inspector or our health inspector because we are in this program I, I'm just looking a little closer to your question, Andrew. In the in the IMA, it does say that staff will allocate their time in a way that is roughly proportional to each municipality's size according to population, which is different than what Connor represented to me because we were going to be able to be a one eighth player. So they've since changed that, and I get I, either they changed that or neither of us knew that. So it's more prorated. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was not aware of that. That is new. That is new. That is new. So it's not the one eighth deal that he first uh, responded to me with that when I asked a similar question. They're now prorating it along the lines of the meta comment to the size of the, you know, the town. So we're not an equal player. Hmm. That's new. And, but we wouldn't be incurring any costs from this, right? Correct. At all. Correct. And okay. I suspect, Dustin, you're using it as a backup, and and a, you know, and not just a backup, but a supplement to what you're doing. Yes. And presumably, you may have situations where, at least from what I understand, there may be a conflict of the participating agent in the town, and you can avoid that conflict by using somebody out of this uh, entity. Correct. And, it, and again, it, it's it's not costing us anything. So, um, it it's a good thing because we we don't have any money coming out of our inspection. So. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion for Millville to enter into the Intermunicipal Agreement for Regional Public Health Services and for Jennifer Gill to be enabled to sign for that. So I move that we enter into the Intermunicipal Agreement for the red uh, for the regional public health service and authorize the chairwoman to sign the agreement. Second. Thank you, Todd. Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Hopefully, we uh, use this to the best of our abilities. Yes. And if you could just authorize, they ask for either the chief municipal officer or the town administrator to sign the commitment letter ah, that Dustin that's what I missed. So you could you could, I knew there was you could sign it or you could yeah. authorize me to do that no let's 
uh, I will make a motion to authorize Peter Crusoe, our town administrator, to sign the commitment letter and the interministerial agreement for regional public health services. Looking for a second. Second. Thank you, Andrew. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Done. Sorry, I messed. I knew the signature thing. I thought it was me, but it was you. Okay, got it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening, Dustin. You're welcome to stay, um, but your obligations <laughs> have been filled in terms of the agenda. All right. Well, thank you. Everybody have a good evening. Thanks, Dustin. Good evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is the conflict of interest disclosure from the building commissioner, Lincoln Barber. And I see that Lincoln's here, so that's great. And I, even though I printed this, I can't find it. So it's not a big deal. I have it on the, I just downloaded it. Um, so Lincoln, do you wanna walk us through this? Seems fairly straightforward. So uh, I live on Thayer Street. There's a piece of, it's, it's a long convoluted story. I'm gonna omit some of it, okay. get to the, what matters. There's a piece of property that abuts our property. Um, it does not have adequate frontage to be a house lot. It's been for sale on and off for, I'm going to estimate 25 years. Um, it has the requirement of getting a variance to waive the frontage, which is uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 feet, it needs 200. So any potential buyer typically would call the town hall and ask to speak with somebody in zoning or building and that's myself. I had a, uh, just such a call the other day. So people are interested if they're not familiar with the process as to how one would make this a buildable lot or even more simple, is it a buildable lot? Um, and during the course of the conversation in discussing the history of the lot and what's required, it occurred to me that because I'm in a butter, which I divulged, and that I hold the position to issue building permits in town, it could be construed by a potential buyer that I could influence the use or not use of this lot. And that concerned me. So when I got off the phone, I called ethics and, and I had a conversation with them. And they said, you are correct. You need to address this. Um, you fill out the form that's in front of you and have a conversation with your appointing authority. And it's up to them to decide what to do. Uh, ultimately, the board takes a vote and uh, the chairman would fill out the bottom half of the form and it, and it gets uh, becomes a permanent document in the town clerk's office. And I wanted to make sure that I was being fair to the seller because um, I, I do have a position on this piece of land that I intend to, if I need to, um, you know, defend my position. So it's before the board. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have and we'll go from there. So, um, Lincoln, I had a question. So they, they have 50 feet and need 150 feet additional to meet the 200 feet requirement. That's correct. They need, okay. But they can't get the additional 150 feet. So they would be asking for a variance to waive the additional 150 and we might be talking 148 i'm i'm not sure yeah. exactly what it is the the seller of this property or the owner um died from covid sometime last year he has invested time and money in it uh been to the conservation commission the piece of property has been to the zoning board of appeals i believe three times in the last 20 years uh, the first time the, the zoning board granted a variance, the, the neighbors that have bought the lot, which are five of us all got together and hired an attorney and appealed the variance and ultimately was overturned. Uh, subsequent to that, two different buyers came forward and applied for a variance before they 
you know, signed a purchase and sale. And, and I believe both times the zoning board, um, obviously the composition of the board had changed, turned down that variance application. So uh, it was part of a much larger parcel that my house lot and all the frontage lots on Thayer Street were subdivided out of. The property owner uh, bought 30 acres, give or take, with two outlets on the Thayer Street. And then they cut, um, just to do round numbers, we'll say 24 acres off and uh, built a house for their, or their daughter built a house on it. And the other six acres is the parcel that's for sale now. Okay. And, and I don't know if you will know the answer to this thing because it's a law question. But I was wondering, so I, the 200 feet of frontage required to build a house, when did that go into effect? I'm just wondering if we changed the rules while this person owned the property. No, not at all. Okay, so it's always been... You That's to... been uh, the zoning requirements. I'm fairly certain since zoning was adopted in Millville in 1977. Okay. He bought the piece of property subsequent to us buying this in 1985. So uh, I think they purchased the property sometime in the nineties. Okay. And they had the option of making a subdivision at that time they chose to do what they did. Okay. Yeah, so that would be my only concern is if they bought it and then we were like, oh, no, nope, now the rules are different. Cause that... Uh, to some extent they would be grandfathered if that was the case. Okay, great. All right. So, um, I guess, so the direction you're looking for from us, I mean, I guess, Lincoln, as long as you're having a, kind of a factual conversation that you're, they're saying, hey, is this build, buildable? You say, look, you don't have the adequate frontage. You can seek out a variance, but others have done that and not been successful. I mean. Right, but to get to the point, uh, you know, the, the caller the other day asked specifically, What's required? I said a variance. They said, has anyone applied in the past? And I said, yes. And I felt, um, and then they said, and what happened? And it happened three times. So I had to divulge what happened. And when I got off the phone, I said, you know, um, I think my honest answers to those questions could be um, construed by a potential buyer that I could utilize my position to um, you know, make it difficult to develop that land. And I didn't think that was fair to the seller. Okay. So I wanted everything on the table. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's anyone in the town hall that's knowledgeable enough to answer questions over the phone in a timely fashion. And because I've been involved in it in a long time, I can pretty much give you the history and all the players but I think the town has to, you know, think about what their exposure is as far as what I say and, and be fair to the seller of the property. So uh, I believe in playing by the rules. Yeah, so, go ahead, Andrew. I was just gonna say, um, so Lincoln, just with this particular property, is it something you could kind of write not a script, but like the history down. So you could refer them to Peter or something like that. Like, cause that was going to be my question. Is there anybody else that could answer questions just specifically about this property, just so that you can just, you know, be completely out of, out of the conversation. So, you know, appearances can be everything, even if it's an honest conversation. I think that's what you're getting to. Yeah. And, I, and honestly, I think that the way we need to go you need to give somebody else a a brief page of you know and it's all public information if they really want to delve deep they can uh, go to the zoning board and say what's happened in the past and then somebody on that board will have to dig up the information but uh personally i'd be more comfortable if i didn't field any more questions about that piece of land okay um so Adrian, that's a great suggestion. I think we just need to have like a one pager with the facts and you can refer them to Peter and Peter can email them. These are the facts. And then if they want further, would that work for you, Peter, or no? Yeah, no, I, I no, and I appreciate Lincoln bringing this forward because he is in an awkward spot, particularly given his history of 
joining in a lawsuit of prior folks dealing with this. So he really has opportunity, if you will, to put the town in legal jeopardy. He doesn't want to do that. And he doesn't want to also give up his rights as a resident and a butter to that parcel. So um, it's a it's a it's a fine line that he's doing. So, yeah, and he really has to rec- in substance recuse himself from the matter when he's in his official role. And that official role could be at a planning board meeting. Somebody's trying to do something or a zoning board meeting. Somebody's trying to do something. So it can't prevent him from sitting there and being a resident speaking out. But it, but it's hard for him to be a resident speaking out and also not be the zoning enforcement officer and building commissioner of the town because everybody knows he is. So there's a that's a fine line that may have to be walked depending on the circumstances in the future. But for now, I think fielding questions and all of that, he best defer those from himself. And so I think, you know, in the, there's, it looks like it's boilerplate in the determination of this form that you might want to qualify by saying subject to the comments below. And there's a spot for comments where, you know, Lincoln needs to, in this matter, recuse himself uh, in his uh, his official duties on behalf of the town, and, you know, or some wording like that, that we all understand, he understands, and yet doesn't limit him to be a resident on the street where something might happen. Okay. That sounds good. Is that fair, Lincoln, do you think? that? Yeah, and I'll fill it in as best I can, but um, I, I, I think to be fair to the seller, I shouldn't be involved in any more discussions in my capacity with the town. Okay. So then what I think, looking at the form, I think what would make sense is in the comments, Peter, as you mentioned, um, so appointing authority signature, I'll sign, put the date, and then the comment I will put is that um, Lincoln Barber needs to recuse himself regarding this matter or for all questions to Peter Caruso, town administrator. Is that reasonable and a, a workable solution? Or, or the Zoning Board of Appeals. I, I, okay, sure. People that are looking to buy property are looking for an answer in a timely fashion. Mm. So, um, you know, are, you, are we now putting the town administrator in an awkward position because he's uh, relaying hearsay information and not coming from the horse's mouth? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that you need to be specific to, to Peter, but I, I'm ha- you can, that's fine. Um, and I'm good at saying not saying a lot by saying a lot, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, just I but, think. Uh, but knowing the facts are key. So as, as long as Lincoln has given me a, you know, the outline of the facts, I can explain why he can't comment on it because of his, you know, personal involvement and that the limited information I have is such and such. And, you know, that's really all there is. And I think still you need to, you know, he needs to recuse himself from not only taking questions and conversations, but, you, you know, acting in his role when the matter comes up before various boards in the town. Okay, so... So I think just recuse himself in his official role on any matters related to this or any, you know, actions related to this. We, we can come up with some wording. You know, I might even touch base with smooth wording from council, but... Okay. That's That's the substance of what we want to do here. And Lincoln's covered in the meantime to. uh... And the reason why I always say just going to Peter is like, Peter might not know the answer, but he knows who knows the answer. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, what do you need to know? I need to refer you here or, you know, and I know that Peter wouldn't answer a question that would cause any issues. So he would know who to go to. Yeah. No, and there's a responsibility on a buyer to know how to ask questions and get answers when they're not immediately available from the party they want to get them from, you know? 
the big boys world and girls and girls i'm okay with you just saying big boys i think adrian is too um <laughs> so then i think maybe peter do we want to so we'll certainly get the right language from council maybe vote on this and then i can sign it at the next meeting Lincoln, are you okay with that for now, or is it something you needed to resolve? I am, but in the meantime, I, I'm not. I'm going to refer mm -hmm. any phone calls to, um, you know, Peter's desk. It's sure. been for sale for years. Uh, the price was just reduced, and land is at a premium, and it has a very attractive price for the size. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think there will be more phone calls as time goes by. Um, it has the stigma, whether it's coming from my mouth or somebody else's. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. Okay. You all set? I think so. Do we need Peter? Uh, do we need Lincoln for anything else this evening? Any other questions, concerns? Okay. So Lincoln, you're welcome to stay, but you can drop too if you want. If you have an exciting evening plan. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So moving on to new business. So appointments. I'm glad that everyone's here tonight because we were doing appointments unless we only had two people here tonight. That was the only thing that was going to stop us lack of a quorum. Um, so how this will work is I will read and Peter, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going to read the person's name and the title. If you want to hold it, you say hold. If you don't, then we just, I'll just keep reading. And the ones that are held, we mark those. Then we approve all the ones that were not held. And then we can go back and take them in order in terms of discussion on, on the ones that were held. Does that work for everyone? All right. So how many pages do I have to read? Uh, and you know what? I think we'll do one year appointments and then the three year appointments and then go back and do the helds. Okay. So one year appointments for a term of July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Um, Lincoln Barber, building commissioner slash inspector. Hold. Thank you. Okay, Todd, hold. Dale Bag Bangma, Assistant Building Inspector. Jack Grenga, Electrical Inspector. John Diagostino, Plumbing Inspector. Timothy Labonte, Cable Coordinator. Timothy Labonte, Member. Jesse Dufault, Member. Madison Durant, Member. Colleen Curris, Member. Carl Hamilton, Member. On the Conservation Commission, Amy Sutherland, member. Treasurer Collector's Office, Lisa LaRue, Treasurer Collector. Hold. Lisa LaRue, Custodian of Tax Collection. I assume you want to do both. Yep. <laughs> Marsha Farrow, Assistant Treasurer Collector. Chief Ronald Landry, Emergency Management Director. Trish Benoit Rudin, member. Philip Franzen, member. Matthew Roeus, member. Emergency Management Department continued. Benton Phelps, member. Paula, member. Police Department, Thomas Reynolds, part time police officer. James Cusack, part time police officer. Philip Franzen, part time police officer. Steve Lacava, part time police officer. Harry Cervantes, part-time police officer. Nicholas Green, part-time police officer. Peter Gallerani, part-time police officer. Animal Control, Kevin Sullivan, animal control officer. Parks and Recreation Department, Chief Ronald Landry, member. Kevin Del Gizzi, member. Open Space and Recreation Planning Committee, Kevin Del Gizzi, member. Green Community Committee, Patricia Benoit Rudin, member. Veterans Services, Jean Turcote, Veterans Agent. Hold. 
Zoning Board of Appeals, Thomas Movey member. And I believe those are all the one year appointments. Did I miss any, Peter? Nope, that's correct. That's okay. the list. All right. So looking for a motion to approve the one year appointments from July 1st to 2021 to June 30th, 2022, as read by the chair of the Board of Selectmen, save the holds. Looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the one year appointments for July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022, as read with the exception of the holds. Second. Thank you, Andrew. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So going back, so I had as holds uh, Lincoln Barber Building Commission Building Inspector, Lisa Liu, Treasure Collector, as well as custodian of tax collection, and then Jean Turco as the veterans agent. Those are the four? Okay. Yep. So we'll start at the top. So Todd, you held uh, Lincoln Barber Building Commissioner Inspector. Correct. I just have some concerns with, um, I think it was a couple months ago, there was an executive session. There were a couple people concerned with his um, professionalism or whatever. So I wanted to hold this because I'm not going to vote in favor of reappointment. OK. Does anyone else have any comments? I guess my question is what happens if um, Lincoln is not reappointed? Because this is also a salary, not a salary, but an hourly position, correct, Peter? You're on mute. That's correct. It's an hourly position. He's an employee of the town. Uh, he's slightly different. Um, Unlike other employees, council looked into this on behalf of the town a year ago when the appointments came up. Um, you're the appointing authority. You, if you don't reappoint, they're not uh, no longer employees. You don't have to have things in the file and so forth that you would normally have if you were trying to release an employee, if you will. So I have comments as well. I'm going for eight flip flops as the over under. I have my notes. Um, <laughs> okay. So as Todd mentioned, um, people came forward and that was one of the things that people came forward when I was running. And there were two things that people came to me for. One was street lights, and the other was um, the building inspector. Those are my hot election campaign items. Um, so people come forward with complaints. And there, you know, there was a few. The flip side of that is just like being on the board of select venue and building the, being the building inspector, it's somewhat of a thankless job. And if something is taking too long, it's kind of easy for the contractor to point to the building inspector and be like, well, you know, Lincoln didn't get here yesterday and I told him to come. And, you know, there's kind of like a little hand waving there as well. Um, and the other thing that is when Lincoln's going to, or the bill, I should say building inspector, I'm sorry, I should use the title. The building inspector comes as to point things out that are incorrect and unsafe, right? Um, and that's how things kind of get, you know, someone's like, I've done it this way for 30 years. It's always been fine. It's like, well, this doesn't, they're not following the rules. Um, so it's not really welcomed feedback usually. And my experience in, you know, I talk about this with my husband. Um, we were on the town administrator selection committee with the building inspector. We selected our fabulous town administrator, Peter, and he was fine. Like he was, you know, I didn't really have any issues. Um, and my experience was always okay. And recently with everything that happened at the school and being in a butter to the school and with the boiler and things like that um you know there's th there's things that the building inspector caught that were they were being done incorrectly 
the flip side of that is the reason why I got involved is because I felt like people that were in leadership positions, well, as long as my life is good and cheery, I don't care what anybody else does to other people. And I didn't really like that. And I didn't think that because things are going okay for me, I should ignore what other people are coming forward. And afterwards, and um, when we had the same building inspector get reappointed again, you know, a, a person did come out of the woodwork and say, you know, I appreciate your efforts, but they, we just don't, we're not a, a town of change and we just do things the way we do them. And that kind of made me sad, to be honest, that someone thought that we weren't going to listen to them. Um, and I have had a stomach ache for a week because I will say like reappointing this person doesn't make me feel like, yay, but not reappointing them doesn't make me feel like, yay, either. I feel kind of like, oh, I have a stomach ache no matter what. Um, so I thought a lot about this and I, I met with Peter and Lincoln again today. And something that this board and Adrian and Todd, you were on it, but many, many moons ago, um, actually, I think it was December or January, I don't know, last year kind of goes together. Okay, um, I had presented at a board of selectmen meeting to maybe we should do reviews and feedback and look at and post positions and have people apply. So I thought something that might be a good middle ground, um, and it's just a suggestion, we don't need to do it. And, you know, we can, you know, well, the majority of what the board thinks is what will happen um, is maybe we do a shorter reappointment or do a holdover for the current building inspector, post the position and have a kind of building inspector selection committee to make sure we are getting the best person for the role. And that committee could be someone from the board, um, maybe, and Peter, because Peter is his boss, um, someone from planning, because I think there's a lot to do with planning in this role, and maybe two citizens. And you know, we would get recommendations from past experiences, you know, for who anyone who applies. You know, good, bad, ugly. What are they like as a coworker? What were they like on the job site? What were they like to work with? And we could kind of do a like a more formal hiring process for this role because it it has gotten so much noisier. And to to Todd's point, like people come forward with thoughts, and I don't know if the you know, and it's tough to discern because of course there's one story from this person and one story from this person. And I doubt either one of them are totally accurate, but I don't know who's more right. So this was just a, a suggestion that I thought of where maybe we could kind of get a little bit more fact-based and have a broader um, set of people involved to, to help get buy-in on no, this is the best person for the job or no, actually this isn't the best person for the job or whatever. So I don't know what anyone thinks. And if I did something I wasn't supposed to do, then I'll just, I'll just be in trouble. So will not be the first time. So I don't know if anyone has thoughts. One thing I would say is that in positions of enforcement and with legal laws and regulations, it's not so much their bedside manner or how likable they are as a person for me, but how well they follow the rules and the laws. Um, and I think that's a key point. Uh, the previous building inspector we had was a shared one. That's my uh, apprehension with sharing positions between other towns. Um, and he never came. He rubber stamped things that should not have been. And he was very inadequate in a lot of ways. I haven't seen that with Barber, uh, the building, current building inspector at the moment. So I'm okay for a review board, um, but not entirely think that it's a worthwhile endeavor, if you get my meaning. Yeah, so. I guess the only point that I would make to that, Andrew, is we do have people who enforce things like the chief mm -hmm. and the tax collector. And like the treasurer, like taking yes. money. <laughs> yep. And we don't get the same kind of color as mm -hmm. we do. Well, I, my counter to that would be that the treasurer doesn't really have much one-on-one -on -one speaking, like dealing with people that much. 
they do to a degree, but much limited. And I guess we'll get to that um, position later. Um, but, you know, I think Lincoln has to deal with people when they're not maybe the happiest because when you're building something, something's going wrong and money's going through and you're losing it and time's wasting. It's not exactly a peaceful situation, so. Nope. But, I... but that's all I had to say. Okay. So in terms of voting, so we can, um, so I guess I'll put my proposal first to put together a, well, I guess let's talk about that. So Peter, say I put this together first. So we're going to put together a, like a mini interview process. Would you be able to post this tomorrow if that's the way that the board voted? Uh, probably. I would certainly try, I guess, if that's what the board wants to do. You know, it's we're not here to review Lincoln. We don't want to do that in this meeting. Nope. We're talking about an appointment uh, process. I, you know, I think you, what you're suggesting, if I understand it, is, you know, re, and you had presented that some time ago, as you say, but it, it, it kind of fizzled. There wasn't much appetite for the, that, uh, that approach back then. You know, one of the, from my perspective, I, I'm not too keen on it, particularly because, you know, it's hard to recruit people in some fashions. It's hard to, uh, get the right people. Uh, I think, you know, as, as uh, Andrew was saying, you know, this is, there's a, there's a lot of understanding of what's, what the rules are. And mm -hmm. we have a body of knowledge that seems to pretty much have a great command of that um, without perhaps the bedside manner in certain situations. Um, but going out to you know, re-upping every, you know, imagine in your job, if you, you know, you, you worked in a position and every year they went out and said, I want to see if I can find somebody better than you every year. That's, that's a very harsh environment to be working under and, or, you know, volunteering under in some of these other uh, positions. Yeah. It's, so it's I, harder and harder to attract people, you know, that's. So I did think about that too, because it is a one year appointment. I wouldn't advocate for doing this every year. I'm advocating for doing this this year because we have, you know, some feedback. And I think, and then maybe we do this, you know, as needed or every three years based on the other appointments. So I guess what I'm trying to do, and we talked about this earlier, is I'm trying to make everybody happy. And I'm probably not going to do that, but I would like people to feel like we have the most qualified person in this position and we've done the due diligence. And right now I can't say that I've done that regardless of bedside manner and other things like that. So just talk logistics and timing. Are you, are you saying that this position, the appointment is being held and the person remains in the position in a holdover manner, which is a legal term, you know, if if you didn't do any of these appointments tonight and there are people serving in these positions, they would remain in those positions unless they resigned or unless you unappointed them. OK, mm -hmm. they would remain in a holdover status until until such time as they were reappointed. So they they're in that holdover status. They have the full authority and can function as if they had been reappointed. I'm, I'm just trying to understand the logistics without, you know, if I'm, you know, Lincoln's listening in, of course, um, you know, what does he do tomorrow? You know, yeah. sort of what do what? I do tomorrow there. when there's a building inspection needed? I don't know how to do that. And, you know, we, we're going to wind up, you know, if you, if you unappoint, which one or more of you may be thinking that or not reappoint and, and not go hold over, then the town is without somebody serving this role and that exposes the town. Yep. So a um, couple things. So one to address that, Peter, when you and I spoke about that earlier, you said that then the state inspector would come in, which is not ideal because it, it's going to be bumpy, right? You know, Lincoln's been, the current building inspectors are working on these projects. 
can go in, hey, yep, you talked about that, bing, 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 dumb. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what, you know, tech, I mean, I said that, I, you know, the state would have to come in. I don't know how they come in or what resources they have or how timely they are, right? So I don't, I don't know that. I think in some of the discussions about the state building folks and, and talking to Lincoln, you know, they've gone from a staffing level of somewhere near 10 and they're down to four covering the state. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but in any event, that's a, you know, that's an unknown. It's not a guarantee that somebody's available to do what's needed to be done in a timely manner. I guess yeah. that's the way I would describe it. No yeah. fair. So I was my, okay, I could go two ways. I was suggesting that we appoint Lincoln Barber to the um, position of building inspector through September 30th and run this process through then. And if we need to extend it to October 31st, we can. I would not anticipate going past that. Like we need to finish this in four months. And if we don't, then that's on us. And, you know, that's what we need to do. Or we just do the holdover. Those are going to be my suggestions for this. So Peter, I am like, when we talked about this, like, you know, hey, what's the worst case? And we said, well, the state will come in. You didn't share these numbers with me earlier that we there was only four people. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I guess I wasn't thinking too, okay. too specifically on okay. that. So when I ask you these questions, I would like that information then. Okay. So, uh, what to do? So um, this is how we'll do it. I will do the appointment through September 30th. And we'll see how that goes. And then we can implement, well, I guess, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking out loud on this. And if anyone has any suggestions on what the process could be. Okay, so I think I got it. So if we, I would make a motion to appoint through the 30th and form this inspector review board or committee, I guess the inspector review committee. Um, and we'd need to seek out volunteers. We need someone from the board of selectmen to, to participate. We'd have to reach out to the planning board and start looking for two citizens who might want to participate like ASAP, just to try to be fair to the person that's in the role. Um, so I would make the motion for the 30 day appointment and the formation of that committee all at once, and then see how that passes or fails. And then we'd go to the appointment for the, if that did not pass, then we go to the appointment for the full year. Does that seem reasonable to everyone? Or would you prefer a different process or a different flow? Reasonable for me, but would you post the job tomorrow? Is that what the plan would be? Yep. I'm having a hard time with this, to be honest, just no, in general, because I've had an addition put on my house um, and Lincoln was the building inspector at the time. Um, I guess I can give my feedback on my experience, but I feel like that's not really separating you know, board of selectmen versus like citizen experience. So, um, you know, I guess I would say the similar thing that Lincoln knows what he's doing and he's, um, you know, my experience was that there were certain things that we had to get engineering to sign off on and stuff because of the situation that we were in and we're able to do that and it can be frustrating, but I think at the end of the day, what ended up getting, um, done because of that is probably better structurally for our home. Um, you know, I agree that um, the experience in terms of interactions could have been more um, fun or just nice, you know, just nicer in general. But, um, but I also think at least from what I understand over the past few years from the Pre previous building inspector to now is there were a lot of outstanding permits that weren't closed and that the current building inspector did a lot of work to get everything updated and closed out. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't somebody else from a review perspective that could do just as good of a job. 
Um, so, but I just, I guess I have a hard time even voting on this because of my personal experience. Um, and so, but I know we need, you know, we need a certain number to pass. So I guess I should just say that's, I'll base my decision based on the work that I know has been done. I haven't received the complaints so much because people haven't reached out to me on that. Um, so that's where I stand right now. I don't know if that's helpful or not. <laughs> I think yeah. One quick question for Mr. Caruso. Last year when we were doing this uh, process, um, I think it was mentioned that we you'd have some one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with the building inspector to kind of improve his um, manners towards um, residents. What did those take place, or what happened to that? Well, we interact quite frequently. We, you know, I'm a supervisor. I'm not a subject matter expert. I. Uh, we had a session today with the uh, selectman Gill, you know, and you, you, the hard thing to identify is what's the problem and how does one solve it, you know, specifically. Um, I, th I think there's a willingness and an ableness to try to solve whatever the problem is. But as far as, you know, we went through, ex you know, Todd mentioned an executive session. I'm not sure if he was in those executive, the executive sessions on the matter. Um, but there were facts provided, and of course there are minutes out there on it. Um, there were there were facts provided, there were conversations had, and so forth. And since then, you know, I have seen few. I, I have hearsay, but I have very few specific complaints. And part of my role is to address complaints. And so since then, there, you know, I don't know that I've even had any specific complaints um, put forth to me that said you may you as selectmen may have had them you're closer in you know many folks within the community but uh, I, I interact with him all the time we he seeks my guidance uh, my advice he you know he's trying to figure something out he looks for my input I guess the better way to put it and my perspective and he factors that into how he handles it and the case in point was of course is is the uh, you know what happened with that uh, forty thousand gallon propane tank that's right underneath the windows of the cafeteria at uh, MES? You know that was a pretty risky situation, and that that I think uh, was very carefully, adeptly, and professionally handled. So maybe I mean. <sighs> Again, I don't know because I haven't received anything, but maybe the answer is appointing tonight for the one year and then, you know, come November. And it sounds like this was kind of what you were trying to accomplish last year, Jen, but I don't know how many conversations were had um, about, you know, what the complaints were and just be more transparent as they come up to see how things may change in terms of interaction and then you know in the November time frame kind of think about okay like if we think we're going to need to look for another building inspector let's do that now before the appointments come back up and give like a six-month process to do that I don't know yeah I guess the reason why I wanted to do this now is um like at least like a shorter appointment and kind of see, do we have the best person is, I think that people in Noble do wanna see a change in this role. Um, the flip side of that is exactly what Andrew said, is that we have someone who's in the role who's knowledgeable and just, you know, rubs people the wrong way. And, um, but it's enough that people, want to see a change in this role. So I'm trying to navigate this and say, here's how I'm going to meet you in the middle. We're going to do a shorter term in review. And then we can come back and let tell everyone, hey, you wanted this change. And I heard you and I understand it. We looked into it. 
and we really do have the best person. And, you know, um, you know, today Lincoln jokingly said, you know, I'll go to charm school. And I was like, you know, may, and maybe that's the answer. Um, but I just first want to show that we've made an on, you're hearing you and we're making an honest effort. Appreciate your comments. But we did this due diligence. And this is what we figured out. Um, and because this came up last year and then just re doing the blanket reporting for a year again, it's like, so you're not listening to me and making any of the changes. Thanks. I feel like there will be feedback like that. I know I will get feedback like that. So I'll make a motion to appoint the building commissioner um, to a term ending October 31st, 2021. With the formation of a committee to- I was gonna do that as a second one. Do okay. you want me to do? Okay. Okay, no, no, no. we can do a separate. Okay. okay. Looking for a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Um, you should have spoke sooner. Now you have to be the decider. I know. <laughs> I could abstain, Jen. <laughs> I'll say aye. I make a motion to form a investigate uh, investigate the uh, a investigating committee to community. investigating yeah sorry <laughs> investigating committee to, uh, for the building commissioner position uh, consisting of members of the planning board um, uh, selectmen uh, members of the community and we want to include the zoning or not zoning might be good and then I think a member of the board of selectmen too. I, yeah, I said one selectman, community member, and um, uh, so one one community member, I mean, two community members, one zoning board member, uh, one planning board, and one board of selectmen member to form an investigatory committee. I will second. Any discussion? The only discussion I had on that is do we want Peter on that as well? You guys think so? Okay. Yes. So, so Andrew, can you amend your motion to also include the town administrator? Yep. And I amend it to have three community members that way it has a odd number um, and to include the town administrator. Yeah, we don't want deadlock. Okay. Se. So I just wanna make sure I have it. So I have a selectman. I wanna yep. write this down to make sure. Zoning, yep. planning. Three community yep. and the town admin. Yes. Yep. Got it. Okay. I will still second that. <laughs> can I just interject in the, in the discussion part of this? Yes, you can. Um, what the charge of the committee is. What's it supposed to do? To, so, to ascertain the proficiency of the building inspector and to see whether replacement is needed or not. No, I think it's nope. just to fill the position. To fill the position? Yep. Okay. Uh, to fill the building commissioner position. Through like a job application process. Yep. Okay. Then evaluating the um, applicants through some sort of objective matrix or something like that. I think that's what you guys ended up doing for the town administrator is yep. agreeing on how to evaluate candidates objectively. So Peter, like with the town administrator search committee, I wasn't um, like, I remember when they formed it, but I don't, so we would have to write up, should we draft a charter right now in this meeting to provide? No, I just want a little more clarity is what what the group is doing. I think you it's a job search and it's, mm -hmm. you know, evaluate applicants and perhaps interview them. And 
mm-hmm. make a recommendation to the board of selectmen, presumably of uh, someone to appoint, which could in fact be uh, Lincoln Barber. Yes, it could. Right. Okay, I get that. Okay. I'll second it again, the third time. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Hi. Hi. All right. So I know I tried to make everybody happy with that, and I probably made no one happy. So at least it's even. Um, but this way we can kind of, one way or the other, if we move forward and it's still the same gentleman in that position, everyone will know that we did everything we could to make sure we have the absolute best person in that role. So, okay. Great. Okay, that's one of the discussion ones. Only four more to go, three more to go. <laughs> one it? more question, Jen, yeah. on this. Um, the Board of Selectmen ultimately will appoint the committee. Is that correct? So once the citizens and the, well, I would assume the planning board would nominate somebody and then the citizens, whoever apply to be on the committee, the Board of Selectmen would ultimately choose those people? Correct. Okay. So actually just to kind of stay on this topic, um, if we want to finish this by the end of October, um, we might want to think about when's our next meeting, Peter? August. Ninth or sixteenth? Would it be the nineteenth? Like next Monday? Because it's the first and the third. In no, the summer, you... we only do one a month. In the summer. So it's August sixteenth. August 16th is the next one. So that's why I'm wondering is if we want to have one like July 26th, a short one on this topic. Okay, well, we can save that to the end, but just think about that. We might want to um, get people together and just because I, you know, I don't want anyone to, you know, Oh, we lost Andrew. Okay, well, I just wouldn't want, you know, the faster we can resolve this, then the more job security we provide for who, who's ever in the role ultimately, so. Okay, <laughs> we need Andrew because his next two, the next two are Lisa. Let me text him. Uh, okay, well, we can, why don't, we're going to be skipping, Peter, I hope that's okay with format to go to the veteran services since we lost Andrew. Yeah. Okay. So, Todd, over to you once again. All right, so this position was appointed over a year ago and I've recently discovered that this individual still doesn't have a computer set up and hasn't helped anybody in the past year. Most of the information on this position is still coming to me. So I think we need a new person in this spot also. Okay. Peter, is that all confirmed behavior? Like no, he, well, he does have his computer set up at town hall. It, it took a while because of COVID, tried to get him remotely set up, but now he's set up at town hall. He has come in, he's worked hard. I guess they've changed the system of how they do things that the, uh, you know, the, some of the computer systems that your the veteran agent works with. So he's been learning that. Uh, I don't know that there's been much demand for veteran services to date. Um, and I know there are a couple of others that would be interested. I know, Todd, you, you know, somebody I spoken to previously as well, who, who are interested subject to some sort of uh, tax work off or some other type of stipend ish compensation. And that's a, you know, sort of a, as I say, a slippery slope for you all to wrestle with um, versus, I mean, I've been back and forth on, I'm not talking about his performance per se, but I've come around, uh, you know, he's on there. I recommend you to point him um he's trying to make it happen and he's not he's doing it all volunteer he's not requiring any compensation direct or otherwise through a tax uh, abatement program 
Todd, do you have someone else in mind to take over the role? So there's two people interested. Um, but like Peter said, that one of them wants to do a senior tax work off as a, one of the veteran spots okay. for that. And I believe even the other one we discussed, Peter, was the same thing, right? That's correct. An experienced VSO would be right. interested in doing it if there was the tax work off option. So have we looked into at all whether or not like the Mass General Law has any restrictions around tax work off programs being in these types of positions? I mean, I think my gut would be a no on tax work off. Like you said, Peter, it could be a slippery slope. And this has also been um, a point of contention. Is that the right phrase? Because all stipends were eliminated. And I, I feel like this may just be a way of kind of getting around the fact that the um, town has not budgeted for stipends. Um, I also think that stipend issue has kind of been on the board's radar in terms of reevaluating and creating some equitability for stipends. So that doesn't mean that it's forever not going to be some sort of compensation for the role, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't support having any kind of compensation for any of those roles that don't already have it because of the history of taking stipends away and, um, and this previously being one of the stipend positions. But let me ask you another question, Peter, in terms of these appointments. How are the appointments out there for people to apply for regardless of whether or not we have somebody that's an incumbent? So like if this like was veteran service agent something that we could have had both the person that is currently in the role say I would like to do it and then other people be made aware that this role is open and you can also tell us you're interested regardless of whether or not there's already someone who's been doing it that's interested. Yeah, so I think on the website, there's a list of vacancies and a list of terms uh, that were up for, you know, positions up for renewal um, that has been up there. I, you know, I have to double check on that second piece, but I'm pretty sure it was up there so that someone could see a position is up for reappointment or the term ends on on somebody filling a position and the you know the town's open to anybody sub expressing interest to be considered for appointment to a position there's no restriction on that we're not actively seeking we're actively seeking fresh blood every you know i uh, you know i'm talking my ta update i went to the senior center luncheon today and you know i'm pushing for volunteers, folks of that crowd to come volunteer. We have plenty of vacancies and, you know, a variety of positions. Um, so I don't know if that helps answer your question on the legality. I haven't sought the legality of, of whether you can or not. I, I, I guess that thought hadn't occurred to me. I, I, I don't know that there's a restriction. I don't believe there's a, you know, a tax work off restriction for people to participate in that program. But that's a good question that's worth learning a little more about. So I think we should, I guess I'm, I mean, kind of in the opinion of this part, like holding this person. I don't want to appoint them, but I don't want to not appoint them just yet. Um, Because I I would like to speak with them and see like what's going on like um and I did that with you know certainly last year did it Lincoln and I did it with Lisa too I don't know Todd is that okay with you is that fair Yeah that's fine Okay so I think we just let leave this one as is Andrew and Adrian any of it do is that okay with you I'm happy to call for a vote if you want to vote on it No my one question was what was the concern I I'm sorry. I'm, Missed some of the meeting. My internet went out. So. <laughs> Happens to the best of us in Millville, Andrew. Yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> so my concern was that I feel over the past year this guy hasn't done 
anything yet and just recently got his computer set up. Most of the requests have been still going through me. Okay. And then there are alternatives, Andrew, other gen, uh, people, I don't want to say gentlemen in case there's women, but other people who are interested. And, um, but they would, well, they would want to do it in the context of the senior tax work off. Um, however, one thing Peter said that intrigued me was an experienced VSO. Like if there's someone who's experienced with a veteran service officer, like, and they can be creative and get a little bit more for veterans in Millville that that might be appealing. So I would start, I'd want to talk to all three people and then see. <laughs> Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, I won't yeah. mention any names, but the, 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 that last piece is, uh, I'll talk to you offline. Okay, sounds good. Should we, um, Peter, would it make sense at the next board of selection meeting to have these three individuals come and say, hey, I'm interested here, like, or is that too out in the open? Would they be, would that be too intimidating, I guess? I guess when I talk to them, I can ask them and say, you know, I'd love to just have you come and meet the board and, and talk about yourself and say why you want to do this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Well, I looked at Todd. He was the, and he had some experience with it. Yeah. Would you have wanted to have met with the board when you? Absolutely you, not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're fine. You know I mean? he, he was uh, willing to do it, and he did it. And uh, there was some action. There were, you know, people in need, and they okay. were, you know, high need, and uh, he helped. Okay. So, well, I would like to meet with him, Peter. If you could send me the names of the three individuals, and then if you wouldn't mind sending them to everyone on the board of selectmen just to yep. reach out. Yep. I don't. Um, I don't think we do enough of this, like the the talking to everyone. So. Um, Okay. Okay. All right. So Andrew, <laughs> thank yep. you for. I'm sorry that happened. It happens yeah, a no. lot, and it's always at the worst time. But uh, you held Lisa Larue for the position of treasurer collector and custodian of tax collection. So yep. what? So without getting into too many details, um, the current one has been there for quite some time. Um, but over those years, there have been some numerous mistakes, oversights. Um, that have cost the town much in resources, not just uh, monetarily, but also in employees' time and uh, in, in employees' anguish with certain things. So I think that it would be only a, um, that would be in the best interest of the town to evaluate this and to see um, who we could get that would be able to, I think, perform the job in a more proficient manner. Okay. So, Andrew, do you have examples of, um, I mean, I understand you don't want to get into many details, but I think it's kind of important to understand what you're referring to and then also get Peter's view on that as well. I think we need to do that in executives. Yeah, because oh, I, okay. I think we can't do a re review. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, not a review, but I guess just to the point that we just discussed, I th oh, because specifics are considered a review. Okay. Um, well, we just discussed the building inspector position. I guess have any of the other, or, or even you, Andrew, received any complaints about the treasurer collector's office in, say, the past year? So I haven't received any, um, but I have focused, I have seen, we have on my tenure, we have had numerous problems, one of which was the retirement funds mishandling which cost the town some money as it was mismanaged and uh, was not properly, funds were not properly allocated to that resource. Um, in addition, I think that um, even though we had gone over this, Selectman, the chairman, chairwoman, uh, and I had on the previous year's discussion of reappointments, but the whole issue of our former town accountant um, and that whole over, oversight, lack of offers, you know, observation, lack of looking into matters strikes me as, to be frank, gross incompetence and a bit idiotic because you can't sign things and not read into what they are. Um, and um, so those are the two big issues. I'm sure there are others I have over 
not seen or don't remember at the moment, but those two I think are easily meritable to yeah. look into this a little bit closer. So we can show you that Adrian, the reason why I was okay talking about the building inspector stuff is because those meeting minutes have been published. So it's public. Um, okay, that's understandable. Yeah. So, and then I didn't bring up any new information because not yet published or discussed. Um, so I, the only thing I will say with Andrew, because um, so last year I uh, I held um, Lisa LaRue's appointment as well. And um, I think what, we're, what we need to do is if we want to expand the scope of her position, we can do that. I think we probably need to have an executive session meeting really is what the end of the day this is. But um, I will tell you what we discussed in the public. And I think it was September 9th, 2020, if you want to go back and watch the beginning part of that meeting. Um, did we do that in executive session, Peter? Do you no, remember? we didn't. I don't. It was just the discussion of her role. So she doesn't, like if there's a check that comes in for, I'm making this up, $15,000 to pay for buses for whatever. She just says in the bus account, there's only $14,000 and we need another thousand to make sure this check doesn't bounce when we send it. That's all that she does. Um, we're pen, spending this much, is there this much in that account? Um, and that's real when I, when we spoke about this and looked at what other, this is what the role of the treasurer is. When we're withdrawing from an account, an amount, is there the right amount to withdraw? So we can certainly expand her role, um, but that is the, what the checks and balances and things that they're looking at. That's really, that's why we have Peter looking at things and saying like, what is this? And the town accountant. So if we want to make her more of a partner in that process, I think we could expand yeah. her role. Um, and I think anything beyond this conversation. So I don't know, Peter, if you had anything to add or if you think, hey, you're right at the line, we need to go to executive session. Yeah, no, I, no, I guess a couple of things come to mind. Just in, I, I understand Andrew's you know, concern, if you will, or hesitation. Um, there's nothing new since we last addressed this topic, I would say, that's come forth. Um, in terms of what Jen was just describing, in the review of warrants payable, the town accountant prepares it, the treasurer signs off that the funds are available to, uh, to, to fund the checks that get, get cut, and yours truly signs off. Uh, in lieu of, in some towns, the Board of Selectmen sign off on the warrants. Here, by, under your bylaws, the you know the town administrator does that. So I review. Yes, I ask questions. Yes, uh, I look at things, make sure they're not, you know, um, that's right. Um, and of course, the, the town's very sensitive to such things, given its uh, prior history. Uh, in terms of the, uh, I'm not sure of what you were specifically referring to in the retirement funds. But, but yes, we had to pay a little extra on there. We didn't take advantage of the um, the um, the discounts. We didn't. We were unable to take advan full advantage of the discounts available by paying prepaying, if you will, the retire the town's participation in the retirement plan. Um, so it cost us an extra thousand bucks, and the reason for that isn't necessarily the. Uh, the the donus on the treasurer. I'll, I'll I'll put the blame on the prior town account, not the not the one under indictment, but the one that left. And he'll I'll speak to him. And tell There's him so that. many of them. Yeah. So, but in any event, it's a function of trying to set up the ability to pay the next fiscal year's bills. And there's a very short window to take advantage of the discount. And last year that window was not uh, so. So that's why we, I'm actually referring to, to do a transfer tonight for that account. So I, I don't know if I'm we're speaking about the same thing, because the thing I was talking about was a little bit more than a thousand dollars that the town dished okay. out. Okay. And this was a while ago. This was probably just, six, maybe seven years ago. So it was a long time ago. Yeah. So, um, but it was definitely a big problem that was kind of swept under the rug. So but I don't think that we should just continue to ignore it. So. Yep. Well, so I guess you're either going to executive session in a future yeah. date to have discussion and or you go the the building inspector 
committee route, you might tack on a position into that grouping even. You know, so that, just try, list, listening to your concerns and how do we move forward again, what happens tomorrow for people? Do they show up or don't they show up? And, uh, and do they show up, but they're still wondering what's going on? At least what you did with the building inspectors uh, position is at least provided a date by which action happens. Um, and maybe that's, I don't know if your level of comfort or lack thereof makes you want to do something like that in this, this situation. It's a suggestion to consider. Yeah. What do you think, Andrew? I mean, we can, yeah, I think that'd be okay to do the same length of time, same basic setup. I'd be admissible. Um, I'd be okay with that. Um, I guess I don't see something happening six or seven years ago when we also had some accounting issues in general, just with the ledger and turnover to be something that I would consider. So um, I would prefer to first vote on the appointment um, before considering adding this position to the um, search committee type role. So I'm kind of in the middle and that I would like to have, looks like Todd, you might have to be the tiebreaker because we're all have different opinions. Um, I was thinking maybe we could tack on, have one more meeting in July if we can and try to get that other committee up and running and invite Lisa to an executive session where we have that discussion first. Um, so we just don't, you know, treat this like we're treating the veterans agent and just kind of leave it. And so Lisa comes into work tomorrow. She's still the treasure collector. Um, because I think, uh, I guess, because I, I don't know that I can fully have this conversation, not in executive session at the point we're at right now. That's kind of my thinking. Is that okay? And we could meet, I mean, I'm okay a week from tonight. I'm thinking it'll be quick, like a 30 minute meeting. I know people are like, yay, more summer meetings. It'll be on Zoom at least, you can do it from home. Adrian, Andrew, would you be able to meet a week from tonight and talk about this in the committee? Well, you wanted to meet sooner for the veterans agent as well, correct? Or were you yeah. off on that till August? No, I was going to try to talk to everyone this week if I can. And then I would know something by next week, hopefully. So we could knock out those three next week or the week after. I, I would want to do it in July if possible, just because I... You know, these are people's, I guess, the veterans agents not getting paid, but you know, for the other people, like this is their job. So, Peter, any advice? There is one elephant in the room, and okay. that's the next item on the agenda for consideration, which factors into your executive session timing and participation. And as you're Board, I don't know when your board is going to turn into a body of three, but that appears imminent. And I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but, uh, you know, some of these matters, um, you know, can you do it with a board of three? Are you likely to have to be doing it with a board of three? I guess is the question. So I don't mean to put you on this, anybody on the spot, but... That's something to put in the back of your mind is the next item comes up and the next item after that comes up on the agenda. Mm -hmm. If we were to vote on this tonight, can Marsha assume the role until you find somebody else or is she not capable of doing that? Well, she has served in the, uh, as an acting in that role while the principal was out on uh, medical leave for a period of time. There were certain things that are 
technical that can't she can't do but otherwise so anyway yeah what a pain Then I guess in the interest, I don't know that we need a committee, but I think in the interest of giving uh, Lisa LaRue some what's going to happen, maybe we appoint her till October 31st as well, while we as a board figure out what we want the next step to be. And I think minimally we want to have something at the next executive session. I don't know that, um, it's because Andrew, I don't know all the details of what you're referring to, and I don't think we can talk about that right now. So I don't want to say, sure, we need a committee when maybe we don't need a committee. Um, and I guess, so yeah, and that, so that's kind of my thing, like to try to give her, all right, we're going to do this through then. Beyond that, you may not have a position. So be you know, to give some warning at least. So it's not just like, whoa, no job. So there's an end date. And that's why I think it's a little bit more fair. Does that seem agreeable to the team? The board, sorry. So why wouldn't we hold? Do you have to have a majority appoint a member? or do you need to have three people? We would need the majority. So if this board were down to three, then two voting yes would be reappointment. Okay. Or two voting no would be no appointment. Yeah. Yeah, the only limitation is just quorum size. Yeah. Like yeah. You have to have three as a quorum mm -hmm. because you're a five member board, even if you're only three members. So you all have to be present. I would recommend holdover completely until you have a conversation okay. in executive session. That's how I would look at it. Okay. Andrew and Todd, any objection to that? I'm I'm good with that. Okay. Andrew? That's okay. Fine. So this will be an executive session discussion going forward. Okay. So that is all the one year appointment. <laughs> Three year appointments. So three year appointments for July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2024. And you do the same thing if you want to hold anything, just shout it out. So police department, Taylor Hansen, full-time police officer. Cultural council, Ronald Kelly, member. Pamela Maloney, member. Cindy Walsh, member. Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Pamela Maloney, alternate member. Council on Aging, Patricia Finn, member, Diane Lamoureux, member, Larry Pearson, member, Earth Removal Board, Lincoln Barber, member, Historical Commission, Elaine Ethier, member, Charles Dekai, member. And that's it. So I will make a motion that we appoint the group just read to their positions for a three-year appointment running from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2024. Looking for a second. I'll second. Thank you, Todd. Any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 All right, we got through that. So thank you all. I will say, and I was telling this to someone, I think I told Peter earlier, like I just get a stomach ache because you want to make everyone happy and you can't. So I feel like this way, like we're showing we're doing due diligence, we're doing a little bit of research, we're trying to make things right, just as right as we can for everyone. So, and if anyone has feedback on anything, I feel like I'm always begging for feedback. I will absolutely take it. If you think I did everything wrong this evening, I would love that feedback. I will, I won't love to hear it, but I will take it and I would act on it. So. Who are you looking for, Jen? <laughs> yeah. What's your email, Jen? <laughs> oh, it's selectman3 <laughs> at millvillema.org. you be like, you did everything wrong. You should have done this. No, I mean, so 
you know, just like, you know, we were talking about the building inspector being a thankless job, like, you know, all of us are kind of in thankless jobs, like no one, you know, not enough people step up to do anything, but then they are certainly happy to tell you what you did wrong. But I am absolutely, you, I will take feedback on anything at any time. Honestly, I really do want to make sure that people think we're doing things as correctly as we can and as fairly as we can. So new business, something that makes me very sad, resignation of a board of selectmen member. So should I take this over or is Peter going to take it? Well, I, I just say that there's no official resignation until okay. the resignee, if you will, resignee, the resigning person informs the town clerk of the resignation and the effective date. So just so there has not been a resignation, but we know of one pending. Yeah. Okay. That's my lead in. Okay. Okay. So I had communicated to Jen and uh, Peter that I planned on resigning from the board of selectmen um, just due to my own personal things that have come up since the election. And obviously I feel really bad that I've only been able to serve for three months on the board and made a one year commitment. Um, but I need to prioritize some other things that are going on in my life right now that I couldn't anticipate and um, really take care of myself and my family. And so just to give the public that is the reason there's nothing wrong with the board we're all like very cooperative and um i do apologize for all the inconvenience this causes for the board um and so in terms of formal resignation i do have some executive session minutes that are outstanding so i don't want to give a formal resignation to the board until i complete my obligation to provide those minutes to you so um that's where my plan resides at this point. Okay. And so normally the executive session minute drafts are reviewed in an executive session. And so there's one already circling out there to be done in the near term. Did, you know, wh whether the timing of the near term will get to the next meeting date, which would be executive session, if it's not August 14th, and whether that fits into what you're thinking, Adrian, in terms of delivery of those minutes um oh yeah they can be ready before the 14th but i guess my question to the board or whatever is do i need to be active to review them or can somebody kind of take the lead in terms of if there are edits required and they can um approve them without me being an acting member of the board anymore I think that's the comfort level of the board. I think, the, uh, yes, I think they can, you know, if you submit the drafts and they're just reviewing the drafts and approving them and editing them in their final stage, then that can be done without you, yes. Okay. Then yes, I can commit to August 14th, okay. a month away. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll meet sooner. Um. Actually, one thing, so I'm sorry to go back to appointments really quick. We were so close. Peter, I did get in my packet an appointment from Chief Landry about an appointment to the fire department. We don't need to do anything with that. Correct. He's, uh, you know, in the fire department, he gets to make appointments. He's just informing you that he's made that appointment okay. of Jonathan Gilbalt mm -hmm. for the term ending June 30th, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, as a member of the fire department. Um, okay, well, Adrian, I'm really sad to see you go. Um, and you know, you don't know what's wrong with the board of selectmen. I gave my email out. We might get a lot of emails tonight telling us everything that's wrong with the board of selectmen. So there could be many comments. Um, okay. Anything else, Adrian? Are you okay to move on? Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so special election discussion and consideration of date. So as we are down to three, and we're supposed to have five. Um, I don't know if we want to consider having a special election. So I did see the email here and a potential schedule. So I guess thoughts, I guess what, so Peter and I discussed this 
last week I was in the town hall. And one thing I mentioned is, so I have a survey monkey account. It's free. So I thought I could just make a survey and ask like, Hey, we need people to run. Do you want to, do you want a special election? Do you, are you okay having a three person board? So I could make like a short survey um, and post it on my Facebook page and other people could share it like crazy. So we could do that and see what people think or like, I'm not, um, like, I guess I don't mind a three person board, but I wonder what, like how the town people feel. If they're like, gee, it's only three people. Is this really representative enough of the town? So I don't know. Any other opinions or thoughts? So I'm kind of open to either, either uh, you know, three member or having special election. Um, I just have one quick question. So when would be the earliest we'd be able to hold it in theory? So in theory, you have 64 days at a minimum notice. So you, so you can set the, so the earliest date would be September 20th uh, from the town clerk. That's the earliest date beyond 64 days that she could be available. That's a Monday. Uh, then the next date's the 27th, then 10 4. And then she's provided me some dates that she's not available um, sometimes in September, October, and November, some particularly. So you can put it out. You could have it in February if you wanted to. You, so you could pick a date for a special election if you felt you wanted to have one. You could pick that date tonight, but it would be no sooner than September 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you could choose not to do anything tonight, live with a three member board, see how that goes and, and do survey monkey to see whether the world wants a five member board. It is in your bylaws. You have a five member board. So then, you know, the next regular election would be, unless you have a special election, that would be when you see more people come to the board, hopefully. Yeah. Running. Yeah. The challenge becomes quorums, you know, and and availability of people, you know, if you're traveling now, but you also have the flexibility of the Zoom meetings continuing, I think, through, you know, through the next election cycle, basically. So to the extent someone's not in town, but is on the road for like, you know, if you, Jen, you were traveling on business, but you still could hold the meeting from, you know, Dallas or Osaka, you know. Probably be for Haven, Massachusetts, when I was there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, I guess, so we don't need to decide tonight on this, but I think we do need to decide soon, in my opinion, because either we fill it sooner, or if it's like, oh, have a special election in February, and we have the real one in April, like, I know that was just an example, but I feel like, why spend the money? Like, either we do it, like, September, October-ish, to have six months of some of a full board, or we fly by the seat of our pants to, uh, until April. So I think, why don't we all take a think about it? Um, I'll, at, you know, everyone ask everyone, you know, what do you think? And at the next meeting, maybe we can have a better idea of what to move forward. And Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the cost of an election, it's not, outrageous it's like three thousand dollars yeah i think it's about three grand for this sort okay. of thing yep okay which i mean if i have no i had no idea it would be i mean so little but that's great that we could potentially fill it and i guess we would just have to make sure it would be very sad if we voted to do this and then no one took out papers and then something like that that would be terrible okay Any other comments on the potential special election? Okay, everyone has homework. Ask everyone you know, ask your friends, ask your family. Do you wanna do this? Will you run? <laughs> and then we'll figure that out. Okay. Um, one day liquor license, Garden Wonders, Marty Liquors, so. When are they supposed to get this in? Because I know Andrew, you're you're very date oriented. So this seems earlier. 
It's July 31st and today is July 12th. Is that it is earlier. The town uh, official policy is 30 days before the event, at mm -hmm. least 30 days before the event. And I did have to remind them to get this in because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it. So, but all the ducks are in a row. All the approvals are there. The chief is weighed in. He's going to have a detail based on the crowd size that's projected. Um, I haven't heard anything bad about the last event. This is a different service provider or licensee, one day licensee than the, the last time. Uh, and it looks like this person's done this a few times before. So the town has everything it needs. Um, all everything's checked off. It's for wines and malt beverages only. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really just subject to your license approval. Okay. It's better than the day of. <laughs> I know it's still not what Andrew wants and Andrew, I really understand like the slippery slope that I am putting us on. Um, but like I said before, um, if I can say yes, I want to. So then people know when I'm saying no, it's just because I, I have to, like, I have to say no to this. I'm sorry. But this, I feel like I, I can say yes to this. You know, I have everything I saw there was a lot of paperwork with it. So, and as Peter mentioned, all the ducks are in a row. So looking for a motion to approve a special one day liquor license for July 12th, 2021 for Anthony Pepe Food Trucks of America, which will be at Marty's Liquors, One Buxton Street, Uxbridge, Mass. I'm trying to find the paper, but I'll move your motion. Uh, <laughs> okay to grant a one day liquor license for July 12th, um, sorry, to Garden Wonders slash Marty's Liquors. Mm -hmm. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay. Looking for a second? Thank you, Todd. We're Any just, discussion? Just discussion, just to clarify Adrian's motion. The license is for July 31st. Your approval is tonight, July 12th. Oh, I read it wrong. Yeah. That's my fault. So yes, yeah, so it'll be for the effective on July 31st. So I, Adrian, you want to amend your motion? Yeah, I'll amend my motion for the one day liquor license to Garden Wonders Marty's Liquors to be on July 31st. Yeah, for that was my line. fault. I read it incorrectly. Okay, great. Todd, do you want to second it again? I'll second it. All right. Any other discussion? And it's been um, approved by all the needed people. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, if you want to stick to your guns on the schedule, no, 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 uh, it's you stick to it's your better. Guns. It's be no, no, it's better. Um, so <laughs> I, I'll vote aye as an exception. I don't want to feel. I don't want you to feel like ah, oh, you don't know no. how I vote. No, no, no. It's it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So okay. improvement is still needed, though. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. So I will sign this and I'll put it within with the meeting minutes and drop it off tomorrow. Okay, I'm inviting council to come in here for the next executive session. Oh, we're okay. not even there yet. We're not there yet. Never mind. We got a couple of We're things. getting close. Because I think the next one, so there's no old business. No. Public forum. Alex, is anyone on for public forum? No comments for public forum. Okay. Anything for the selectmen reports? Um, Jen, I guess I should have probably brought this up before. If you, um, I also, I mean, as part of the Board of Selectmen resignation, I also resigned from the BMR Capital Planning Committee. Mm -hmm. So if the um, Selectman wants to appoint someone to that committee, I'm sure the BMR Committee Capital Planning would appreciate that. So I just want to bring that up. Okay. So I'm already on Millville's capital planning committee, so I'm not taking on another capital planning committee. But um, so Todd or Andrew, if you want to have a think on it, if you have time to attend, how often, what's the burden look like, Adrian? Is it like every other week? Is it monthly? 
Um, so I have to be honest, I haven't been able to make many of the meetings, but um, it's- Well, there's no burden at all, is what you're saying. Yeah, well, one, I don't think it's as formalized as the RAC, mm -hmm. where they're actually like have reached out and gotten um, members from the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee. I would double check with Matt just because I'm, I don't want to speak out of turn. But um, it's once a month they've been meeting, I believe, um, it's not even consistent. I was going to say on Wednesdays, but it's once a month for the meeting. And generally it starts at 530. Okay. And, and those meetings are in person or? Yes, they're in person at the middle school library. Okay. That makes it a little bit more challenging versus Zoom. Okay. I guess an alternative to having a member would be to maybe have them give us updates quarterly or something. Okay. And Matt runs that, Adrian? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a school committee member that's actually probably running it, but I'm sure if you reach out to either Jane or Matt, they can give you more information. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, my for my selection report. So tomorrow at seven o'clock is a capital planning committee meeting. We're going to be talking about um, the highway asks for capital and maybe an update on the um, facilities reports and then talking about goals. So it's going to be a riveting meeting. You're going to be so sad you missed it. Anything else, Andrew Todd? Um, just a couple quick questions. Um, so have, um, I know I've kind of drummed this uh, a little bit, but the library, um, survey did, are that have they concluded that at this point or is that still ongoing? Do we know? I don't know anything that they've concluded it. You got that email from Colleen, yep. the uh, director. So I haven't heard any more since then. Okay. Um, follow up though. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other one was the, I remember when we had originally put in the work off, um, tax work off program, we were speaking about reviewing it at the end of the first year. Obviously it's been a bit of a had a interesting <laughs> year to say the least, but um, wanted to kind of know if we had any feedback from the departments that had it um, or what your thoughts were or anything like that, if we could. Sure. Um, there's only two participants who are helping out at the senior center. We've posted and are now looking forward to having some folks uh, apply for it uh, to assist at town hall. The library possibly could use somebody, but they're not really jumping out for uh, reaching out in any great sense. Um, it's posted over at the Senior Center. It's on the website, a brief description of the general, um, you know, needs of the town. And uh, again, not many takers so far. So um, I was at the, and so I'll just maybe morph into my town administrator report a little bit. I was at, the, as I mentioned earlier, I was at the Senior Center and uh, for luncheon today and I, pushed for that as well. You know, we, we would certainly welcome some folks. They shouldn't feel hesitant to come forth and say, I'm interested in exploring uh, some way of participating in the program and uh, what, what I can do. So I, there may be some hesitancy uh, on the part of folks to even explore it. We don't want them to feel that way. We're nice people to deal with. So we hope they'll, they'll come forward. So we haven't we haven't burned through it. Just two people so far. That's all. Okay. So select my reports. Oh, sorry, town administrator report. We just yeah. So besides the senior that. center, that which is a great lunch and it's a great crowd. I think they had over forty people there today, and uh, it was good to see there getting things rolling. I think they're going to have another luncheon in August. Um, another item, uh, the FY20 audit has 
commenced. They, you know, we're providing them information, their schedules that they need and so forth. Um, and we heard actually at the end of last week on uh, the green community grant application that the town it was not successful, but is being invited to come back again uh, as early as this fall. Um, they had limited resources available, so they turned down a few towns applications. And what we were looking for weren't the uh, highest energy saving investments on the part of their grant uh, money. So um, we'll sharpen our pencils and give it another go come October. So that's really all I had at this point. Okay. Items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to meeting? Nope. Okay. So the next regular meeting is August 16th. Do we want to try to have another meeting in July to talk about um, the building inspector committee as well as the executive session for the treasurer discussion and hopefully so maybe closure on the veterans on the appointments so i guess do we want to have a another meeting to discuss the appointments situation generally i assume so we probably want to get a yeah get this done as quickly as possible for the sake of the employees and for yeah. ourselves i think so too so between so july 19th is a week from today and july 26th is two weeks from today any preference on either one of those dates can anyone not make either of those dates i can make either so i can too Adrian, Todd, can you make? Yeah, that's pretty good. Either one. Either one. Okay. Um, well, because I wouldn't mind wrapping this up. How about the nineteenth? We want to make me a week from today at seven p.m. Okay. July nineteenth. Okay, and then hopefully. Ask everyone you know if they want to be on the um, building inspector committee. We need, we need three people. Ask people if they want to volunteer for anything at this point. I know. Yeah, a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a free five minutes every day? If you're not helping in Millville, you should be. Okay, sounds good. All right, so Peter, um, I can work with you on the agenda for that, you know, over the next day or two. Okay. All right. Signatures we did. So I think we're done and ready for executive session. Only to can. return for adjournment, adjourning. Okay. So, Alex, if you want to make me the. Um, we host, need to make a motion. To make the motion. Oh, yeah. And you don't need to do the Sorry. I'm like right on it. I'm like, let's just go. Sorry. All right. So, who. You don't need to do the first one. We're not going to cover that, man. Okay. There's nothing. Okay. So just B yeah. through C. B through C. E through, through e. e. Sorry. B e through E. If and you want, I'll take the lead, Andrew, so that you know it's one of my <laughs> last meetings. I'll do it. <laughs> I, I can do it. Um, so. Um, I move that the board of selectmen enter into executive session. Per Mass General Law Section 30A, subsection 21A3, to discuss strategy relative to pending litigation, Herto v. Millville et al., where discussion of these matters in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town. I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session per Mass General Law Chapter uh, 30A, subsection 21A3, to discuss strategy relative to pending, pending litigation. Uh, Datoma versus Millville, where discussion of these matters in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town. I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session per Mass General Law Chapter 30A, subsection 21A, 1 and 2, to discuss strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with the non union personnel or to con conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. 
Further move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session to comply with or act under authority of any general law, specifically Mass General Law Chapter 30A, uh, Section 21 F and G to review assorted executive session minutes. Very good, Andrew. <laughs> Looking for a second. My mistake. We don't need the last one. My yeah. mistake. Okay. So we need A? Strike, we strike strike. E. We don't need A. We don't need E. So strike E of your motion if you could. Okay. I'll strike E of my motion. All right. Sounds good. Looking for a second? Second. Thank you, Adrian. A discussion? Can you repeat that? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 See, we're fun. Um, okay, so looking for a roll call vote. So, Andrew Howard? Uh, uh, aye. Adrian Pettit? Aye. Todd Trottier? Aye. Jennifer Gill is also in aye. Okay, so now, Alex, you can make me the host. 